Ever seen someone hand letter a quote with brush pens where the letters look like they fit snugly together like pieces of a puzzle? Pretty cool, isn't it? This happens to be one of my favorite types of lettering compositions. And in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to write a quote in two different ways using this puzzle piece style. My name is Alyssa from Lissa's Letters, and the footage for this video happens to be from a bonus lesson for my brand new online class called Lettering Layouts, which is available on Skillshare starting today. Woohoo! In this class, I show you how to make several different layout designs with banners and decorative embellishments, but don't worry, we're not going to get into that in this video. Instead, we're going to be starting with a super simple design with all of the letters the same size and font, and then taking that original design one step further by balancing the spacing in the composition using only flourishes and bounce lettering. This creates that puzzle piece style that I've been referring to. Let's start with a simple pencil sketch for the letters. I make sure the letters are all centered and evenly spaced. The lines are about three centimeters apart vertically. Now is the time to start planning out how to fill out the space. So the next step, naturally, is to identify where there's empty space that needs to be filled. Here, I take a pink colored pencil and circle the areas of negative space. Once I've marked out the areas I want to fill, I experiment with different strokes to take up the space. Before we get into that though, let's just have a super quick refresher on flourishes. Flourishes are embellishments of the text that aren't necessary for you to read the letters, but they add some flair to your calligraphy. These are all flourishes, and don't worry, the flourishes we'll be making today are nowhere near as complicated as these. Flourishes can go above a word, below a word, or to the sides of a word. When in doubt, if you aren't sure what letters to flourish off of, look for letters with loops. For example, this L has a loop, and we can add a flourish to the loop in a few different ways. This P also has a loop, and I can turn it into a flourish as well. Letters like L that have large loops above the baseline are called A sender letters, and the loop is called an A sender loop. And letters like P that descend below the baseline have what are called D sender loops. For the purposes of this lesson, the shapes we'll be using to make flourishes are simple C shaped curves, S shaped curves, and possibly loops. In this type of composition, the simpler the better. If you want to go more in depth into all things flourishing, I'd suggest you check out my other online class, Flourishing Made Simple, which is also available on Skillshare. Now let's get back to our composition. I noticed that the letter L here could be widened and moved slightly to the left, which better fills up the space. Then I play around with bringing the bottom of the T in worthy lower down. Adding a loop to the letter R in Worthy takes up some of this area, and if I add a tiny flourish onto the D sender loop of the Y in the word U, the remainder of the space is filled. There are a couple of ways I could fill up the space in the top right pink area, and I immediately gravitate towards adding a long curved crossbar to the letter T that extends into this area. Lastly, there's the space above the O in the word of, which I fill in with a small flourish extending to the left of the A sender loop of the letter F. I add a little exit stroke to the end of the word worthy, because I think it will look nice, and then I make the letter V just a teensy bit taller, and now the sketching portion is complete. The inking should be pretty straightforward, but I'll let you in on a little secret. To ink in the flourishes, 
I change the way I'm holding the brush pen just a little bit to get the thickness that I want. Let's take a closer look to see what I mean. When I letter Y, I hold the pen such that my hand is next to the letter and the top of the pen is tilted towards the right. Then, when I switch to making the flourish off of the descender loop, I move my hand below the letter and the top of the pen tilts towards the bottom of the paper. This way, I can make the strokes thickest when I'm moving the pen from side to side rather than downwards. The same goes for letters with A sender loops. I make the letter by holding the pen with my hand to the right of the letter. Then, to make the flourish, I switch my hand position. My hand is now below the pen and the top of the pen tilts towards the bottom of the paper. Now I can make the sideways stroke nice and thick. When inking in the words, you are worthy of love, I primarily hold the pen such that I can make the down strokes thick. But to make the flourishes, I adjust my hand position. Notice how I taper the strokes when I make the flourishes so they are thinner at the end and thickest in the middle of the stroke. You may also have picked up on my use of bounce lettering. For example, in the first line, I bring both the letter U and the letter R below the baseline. To clarify, bounce lettering refers to taking a letter or part of a letter and making it dip below the other letters. For example, I'm using bounce lettering here, but I'm not using bounce lettering here. Okay, so back to the composition. I only use the bounce lettering technique if there's an area of empty space I'm trying to fill. I didn't use bounce lettering for the letter A on the first line because the letters below it were just too close. And here we have it! I love how this lettering layout turned out. Before we get into the second layout design, I'll just quickly fill you in on some of the details about my lettering layouts class. It's about an hour long, not including the bonus lesson, and it comes with three printable worksheets and step-by-step -step instructions to guide you in creating your own unique lettering layouts. Right now, it's available through Skillshare, which is an online learning platform with thousands of classes that you can access if you have a membership. I believe Skillshare is offering a 30-day free trial if you sign up now, so click the link in the description box below to get access to all of my classes and thousands more for free for 30 days. Okay, so now let's apply the same techniques we just covered to this arrangement of the text with each word on its own line. I start off by sketching in five evenly spaced lines. I suggest you use a ruler for this part. And then adding in the words, making sure they are centered. Notice that there are several areas that we want to fill. For this design, I'm being a bit daring and adding ink right away, rather than planning it out with pencil, which fortunately turned out fine, but I recommend you use pencil first. For the word U, I used a bouncy style. So the letter O sits slightly above the baseline and the final stroke of the letter U descends below the baseline. I add a flourish onto the letter Y to fill up the space, and I add a little curl to the tip of the flourish because I love that look. I stylized the letter R with a loop and made it tilt upward, and then the letter E sits slightly above the baseline of the A and R, so that there isn't too much space between the E and the U above it. Eventually, I pull out my pencil to plan out the rest of the letter spacing, and man, this is so much easier with a pencil. Notice how I moved the O and R down 
to make space for the crossbar of the T. I add a small loop to the letter W and then slightly adjust the spacing of the crossbar of the T when I ink it in. After I add a nice long curved flourish to the letter F, I mirror it by filling in the space on the right with the loop on the letter Y. For the word love, I use a bounce lettering style with L and V descending below the baseline of the other two letters. By using bounce lettering throughout the entire composition, we create consistency. And here we have it, our two lettering layouts using this fun technique. You can leave the design as is, or you can add a shape around it with decorative elements, or maybe even a frame. The possibilities are endless. I hope you found this little tutorial helpful. If you want to go way more in depth into lettering layouts, then make sure you check out my lettering layouts class, where I'll walk you step by step through the techniques of arranging the text, identifying a hierarchy of word importance, designing and selecting unique fonts, and adding decorative elements like banners, flourishes, and small embellishments. You'll walk away from the class with an easy, memorable formula to consistently create unique, eye-catching compositions. In each lesson, I provide you with a simple task that builds upon the previous lesson so that by the end of the class, you will have designed at least one beautiful draft of a quote of your choice. Thanks so much for joining me in today's video, and I hope to see you in class.